Let's stand and worship this morning.
And once you realize it, that things maybe didn't turn out the way that you wanted, the way that you hoped. But you realize that despite of that, Jesus was there for you. That's really what this song is declaring. The song says, God, how I need your grace. More than these words could ever say. And Jesus, just as I am, I come before you. So I invite you to declare that with us this morning. Don't have a Yeah. 
Can we just sing thank you, Jesus? Welcome, welcome, welcome to Mesa Place Church. We are so blessed to have all of you here with us today. I'm Amy Sinceri. I'm one of the founding members of this church. And I just want you to know, ever since the beginning, we truly, truly have been praying for all of you, for all of you to come. And you might think, well, how would they know that? God knows that. And we have been praying for all of you. So we just welcome you, and we're just so blessed to have you here with us this morning. Um, a few housekeeping. If anybody came last week, had a little issues with the parking, um, we do apologize to, for that. There was an event going on that we didn't know of, but thankfully, uh, Paul and Manny, they did a pretty good job ushering people in, so that was pretty great. Um, yes, give them a round of applause. But normally, um, even today, if you had some issues parking, you couldn't find a spot Right across the street, there is a big lot, and there's tons of parking, and normally that is open, so you can go ahead and park over there. And we just found out that you can actually park right along the side here of our church building, actually in the street, and you won't get a ticket, you won't get towed. So if you want to do that, you can do that as well. Um, so housekeeping for the bathrooms. For the men, the bathroom is just right over here. You can just go right in for the ladies. There is a sign here, but that door is locked for your privacy. You're going to go out into the lobby and then use that door. Um, shortly, we're going to be doing our tithes and offerings. If you're a first-time guest, please do not feel obligated to give. Um, we just want to thank you with you coming today, hearing the message. Bless you and all of that. Um, before we get started, we do have a short video we want to highlight. David Garcia, David, do you want to raise your hand? And the ministry work that he's doing. So we're going to go ahead and show a quick video on that. Hello, my name is Mike Aguilar. I currently have the privilege, the honor to facilitate the Teen Challenge Men's as Program Director. Hi, my name is Betty Aguilar. I'm the Women's Program Director here at Teen Challenge El Paso. My name is Marta Ramirez. I am the Bible Instructor here at Teen Challenge El Paso. My name is Laura Armendares. I am the Secretary at Men's Teen Challenge El Paso. My name is David Garcia. I'm a GPS uh, teacher. And what we do in GBS, it's a group Bible study. And basically we're studying uh, different guides, different manuals. And uh, it's, uh, it's all biblical based. We are teaching them basically that they no longer have to live the life they've lived before. Uh, what I like is that the men that come in, you can see a life change in them. Uh, a lot of the men are off the streets, you know, they uh, drug addiction, alcohol, and they come in here with a with a willing heart to change, and now God has enabled them to come, and um, you know, do what God would want them to do in their lives, not to be uh, drunks like they were or drug addicts, but to be men of God, men that have a personal relationship with the Lord, uh, men that will go home uh, one day and be the fathers, be the providers, be the husbands that God ordained them to be. I've been here at Teen Challenge for going on seven years and it has been such a blessing. My, my heart is totally for, for these women and, and for Teen Challenge. It's amazing to see what God does in the women's lives each and every day. And um, I enjoy every single day seeing the way God changes the lives and the different needs, the different circumstances these ladies find themselves in. Uh, Teen Challenge is for women with life controlling problems and 
Uh, we see women come through here so broken and, and so abused by life. And just to see the way God transforms their lives, it's, it's amazing. I have been here about seven years. My responsibilities are to teach group Bible studies. I see the beautiful work that the Lord is doing in these women, and that's all I need. It's a beautiful thing to serve God, to serve these women. Many, many, many women come and go, and if one of them gets saved by what little I can say, I believe that that's, that's good for the Lord. I started drinking at a very young age of 12 years old. I think I became an alcoholic by the age of 15. But that all changed. I came to Teen Challenge in the year of 2014. I gave my life to Jesus Christ, and I noticed that things started to change within me and within my attitudes, within my behaviors. I'm able to give back to people. You know, a lot of people come in here and they are struggling. And I think that since I've walked in their shoes before, that it, it's more easier for me to relate with what they're going through because I've also been on the student side and then now on the employee side. But yes, I grew up in this neighborhood. I uh, was involved in the, in the gang life, sold drugs most of my life. I did drugs most of my life. I uh, didn't treat my family the way I should have treated them. And only by the grace of God, uh, you know, such a loving God that we have that he pulled me out of, out of all that darkness and, and brought me into his, his beautiful light. It's, it's truly a blessing to see these men come through, through these doors and, and see the way they've, they, they, they got here and to see the way they, they're, they're looking now and, and, and see the, a God changing them you know, and, and molding them, you know, it is truly, truly a blessing, truly a blessing to be here. And out of the streets where I used to, you know, do the things that I used to do, God is, God is amazing. He truly is. All right. Yes, he is. That is just so awesome. And we are so blessed to have J David, one of our church members, doing that. David, you're doing amazing things over there. Yes, give them a big hand. And if you guys want any more information on that, on Teen Challenge, obviously get with David, and he can help you out with that. Um, we have, oh, clothes, they're doing clothing drive? Clothing drive? <laughs> okay, so they're always looking for clothes. So if you have clothes for the guys that you want to donate, please get with David to be able to do that, yes. Um, we have really exciting news. Who was here for VBS? We had a really, really great VBS program. And during the VBS program, we were doing an offering for John and Crystal, who are in Ghana. And we're really happy to announce that the kids, we were just doing this with the kids, right? Asking them to bring in change and whatnot. They collected $90 to be able to give for them. So that's really awesome. Yes, praise God. Um, so we have a lot going on. So if you want to take some notes, now's the time to get your pen and paper. Um, you can follow along with the chalkboard. And then also our website too, guys. Our website's really awesome. There's a calendar on there, announcements on there. You can just click on it and find out the information there too. But coming up, so this Wednesday at 7 p.m., we are going to be having a service here at Mesa Place Church. So if you'd like to join us again, that's this Wednesday, August 8th. And then Saturday, August 11th, our youth, our NEO's youth, they're going to be doing a law conference event. That's going to be from 7 to 9. So if any of the parents that have youth um, have questions, you can get with Alexis, right, to get some more information on that. And then coming up, this is really exciting for the ladies, because I don't think we've done this before, had a ladies, all ladies brunch. We're going to be doing a ladies brunch on Saturday, August 18th at 11.30 a.m. Yes, Miss Salinas heading that up. So if you have any questions, you want to volunteer, get more information, you're a lady, just get with Miss Selena on that. And then we've had a lot of new people, right? Let's just give that a round of applause. That's awesome, right? So if you're new and maybe, you know, you're still trying to figure out, you know, is that where God wants me? Is it not? Is that my church? Is not? And you want to learn more about our church and, you know, how we started, what our mission is, our values, and all of that. We have a membership class happening on Sunday, August 19th, and food will be provided, right? Okay, got to make sure because there's usually food provided. So if you want to attend, you can just write on one of the blank cards that we have um, for communication that 
I want to attend the membership class. Please put your information, you know, your name, your phone number, um, so we know who you are. And that way, too, for the food, we have enough food provided. So that will be happening. And if you have, obviously, more questions on that, just get with Pastor Christian. Okay, then, things on the horizon. So we took a little break this summer, right, from our Bible studies. We had a lot going on, a lot of things our church was doing, outreaches and whatnot. But we're going to be starting them back up. So that's a good thing, right? Um, so if you were in the Revelation study or you want to join it, don't feel if you've missed it that you can't come. No, you can always come to the study. So the Revelations Bible study led by Pastor Christian, that's going to be starting back up on August 23rd. And that study, they're going to meet every other Thursday. So if you want more information on that, get with Pastor Christian. Then um, if during the week is hard for you and Sundays are best, we have a Sunday morning Bible study that's going to be starting up. Myself and my husband, Paul, we lead that one. It's at 9 a.m. over in the kids' building. Yes, Stephanie's in that one. Um, right now, we're just in the book of James. So we're just going through what does it say, what does it mean, how do you apply it to your lives. So if you want to join us, we're going to start that one up August 26th. So August 26th at 9 a.m. And then Miss Lori has a study for the ladies on Monday evenings. Selena has a study she's doing. Those ones are ongoing, so those ones are still happening if you're in them. And then we're excited. Where's Greg? Greg is going to be starting a new group, so I want to have him come up to tell us a little bit about that. Morning, guys. Those of you that know a little bit about my, about my story know that I come from a recovery background, so I was part of a recovery ministry. Um, people struggling with all kinds of things, not just addictions. And, uh, you know, as I, I see myself going through stuff and I... I hear about the church going through stuff. I really want to be able to provide a, a place where, where you guys can find support, where you guys can find healing, and uh, really go through this uh, step. It's eight principles that we go through uh, based on the Beatitudes, and it's all Jesus-based. You know, I like what David said before. You know, God has pulled us out of this darkness, and so that, that's the whole idea of it, to find support with each other and, and really rely on God uh, through anything, any hurt, any habit or any hang up that you might be stuck in it. So if, if that's something where you feel, you know what, I've been stuck in this for a while, I really want to see healing, I really want to see growth in that area of my life. So just, just go ahead and come, come over uh, to me, come talk to me about it, I'll give you more information. It's going to start on Fridays, the first week of September, uh, looking, shooting about 7 o'clock or so, but come talk to me. There is some material involved, so I just need to make sure that we have enough material for that. Um, any questions? Just come talk to me. Um, and lastly, on the horizon, we are going to be doing another potluck. Who's been to an MPC potluck before? They're pretty awesome, huh? So we want to do another one. It's going to be on September 2nd at 5 o'clock. Um, we'll be getting more information out. I volunteered to head that up because I know it's a lot of work sometimes. So if you have questions, get with me. Um, as it gets closer, we'll do a sign-up sheet, all of that to kind of figure out. But just put on your calendars September 2nd at 5 o'clock right here at the church for that. Okay. Um, and then before I pray, I just wanted to share, you know, I was in the kids' room last week, so I wasn't in here, and I didn't get to hear the message. But I went back through, checked out our awesome website, um, and that podcast is really awesome. It's really clear to be able to hear the message because I... Every time I'm in the kids' room, everybody tells me it's the best message of their lives that was preached in here. It's happened since the beginning. Um, so I said, no, I got to check that out. You know, I got to check it out. And, you know, gosh, it's just amazing how God works, you know, through that message. It was bringing me back. And I want you guys to know this church is built on Christ. That is the number one thing. This is a Bible-based church on God's word and also built on prayer. We have been praying and praying and praying, and we pray about everything. Literally, if we bring something up, Pastor Christian says, well, what has God said? Have you prayed about it? And we don't move until we pray about it, and we pray and pray and pray. And with that, um, if you're a lady and you'd like to join us in prayer, every Wednesday at 6.30, we meet over in the kids' building, and we do. We get together and pray. Or maybe you have prayer requests. We would love to pray for you and those prayer requests. That's what we do as a church body. So, again, put those on the um, communications cards and let us know how we can pray for you. Okay, so let us go to the Lord in prayer. Lord Jesus, we just praise you. 
we thank you for all you do, Lord. Thank you for Mesa Place Church, Lord. Thank you for a place where we can go so broken, but be so accepted and so loved by you, Lord. We just praise you and we thank you for that, Lord. I just lift up Pastor Chris and the message, Lord. I just praise you and I thank you on this series about church, Lord. Just continue to open up our eyes, our ears, Lord, to hear your true word, Lord, and your love, Lord, and just let it resonate and speak so deeply to all of us, Lord. I just praise you. I thank you for all the people that you brought here to our church, Lord. Just continue to watch us and guide us. And we just love you so, so much, Lord Jesus. We praise you and thank you for all, everything in our lives, Lord, the good and the bad, Lord. We just give it all to you, and we love you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.
Father, isn't he? And I, I, I heard an account that I shared with a couple of people this this past week, and it really just kind of it really stuck with me. And this account, the, the pastor giving the message, is talking about about when Peter walks out into the water and they see Jesus coming, and they think he's a ghost, right? And when they think he's a ghost, they say, who are you? And he says, I, I am. And Peter says, well, if it's really you, call me out into the water. And Jesus says, okay, come out. And you see, what astounded me was that, that Jesus was not going to return void to himself. So when he said, it's me, and Peter says, hey, well, if it's really you, Call me up. Well, then by all means, Peter, come out. But when Peter takes his eyes off of him, when Peter loses his grasp of the fact that Jesus is that faith, and he starts to believe that he, that he doesn't understand how he can do what he's doing, when it stops making sense, he starts sinking. But our good Father, in his infinite love, reaches out, takes him back up and puts him right back into the boat. You wanted to step out, and I let you. But I love you so much that when you start sinking, I'll take a hold of you, and I'll put you right back where I intended you to be. That's the message of that. Dear God is so loving that even when we step out, He's there to pick us up and put us right back where He needed us to be. That's a good God. Amen.
Jesus, you are Lord of all. From the beginning of time, you were there, just waiting to lay down your life to save us. I can't imagine you, you know, in, in your word, as you're sitting there and you're just, Lord, if there's any other way, Father, any other way, but my will, but your will be done. I pray that is our heart always, Father, that we just lay our will down and that your will be done in our lives. Sometimes we just step in, our minds wander, we want to take control. We forget where our true strength and hope comes from, God. So align our lens with yours. May we see through your eyes. May we see hearts and minds and may we love just as you desire us to love, God. Grow us, change us. Mold us, God, into exactly what you desire us to be. Even if you need to t break us and take us all the way down, God, we are your vessels. And we are here to be moved by you, to feel you, to know you deeper, to know you strong, to know your strength, God to know that you are stronger than anything we are up against. For when we trust you, when we trust you, God, that, that brings us, and you in that, your spirit gives us the ultimate faith to stand knowing we have nothing to worry about, nothing. For you know exactly our path, you see our tomorrow, God, you see our next year. And you see how, it sh how you're shaping it and how you're molding it. And in spite of us, in spite of us, God, your will is done in our lives. God, we're so grateful for you. We're so thankful for you. We're so thankful for this time to just stand in your presence and worship you. To give you all that we are. To lay it at your feet. To come together as a family, united, to see your heart for us, God. We just be with Pastor Chris as he preaches this morning, God. Every word straight from your heart. And may we be open to hear it. May we let no, no thought, no imagination, no, um, just nothing we brought with us today, may we set it all aside. Our attitudes, any anxiety, any fear, any worry for what you might have to say, God, may we just be open to hear from you. We thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Today we salute you, Mr. Back Pew Warmer. Mr. Back Pew Warmer. You arrived at church a half hour early to reserve a seat in the back row. It doesn't have your name on it, but everybody knows it's yours. Everybody knows it's yours. You're not afraid to confront the occasional visitor to let them know this is your territory. Back off, mister, it was his seat first. And heaven forbid the day when you have to sit another pew closer to the front because then you may actually have to stay awake. Ooh, you might actually learn something. We'll keep your seat warm for you, Mr. Back Pew Warmer. Mr. Back Pew Warmer. All right. Well, we, we hope today that you find a seat and no, going to church is not about uh, saving your favorite seat. Welcome to MPC. My name is Christian. We're glad that you've joined us for worship this morning. Uh, I want to highlight just a couple things. First is that Lori Wrinkle and the Chavarias are out of town right now, so Lori's not having her Bible study tomorrow. So if you're a lady and you're coming to the Bible study, go ahead and stay. There's a broom and a mop that we'd like to give you so you can help instead. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Yeah, don't come from the Bible study unless you want to clean. I'll be here. 
Anyway, I also want to really, really highlight next Saturday. A anybody that is a teenager, give me a, a whoop whoop. All right, I expect all those whoop whoops to come out next Saturday from 7 to 9 p.m. You can come sit right here, mamas. From 7 to 9 p.m. as uh, we have our very own David and Lori Gonzalez. Uh, give them a hand back there. yoo -hoo! They're going to be speaking to us about the law. David is in law enforcement and corrections. That means he works at the prison, so you don't want to see him. And Lori, she works with uh, local law enforcement uh, and teens. So uh, uh, you definitely want to get her information before you have to meet her uh, the other way. But I really believe that the teens are going to get something uh, from that. And so I want to encourage also you adults of teenagers to come, go ahead and come on out. I know it's a youth night, but I really believe that you'll be highly enlightened to understand what happens uh, with the law and your teens. So again, I hope to see you all next Saturday. And I also want to remind you guys, please come out Wednesday. Our very own Rebecca, she's going to be leading us in music worship uh, for the first time. So we praise God for that. No pressure, but everybody point to Rebecca. No, I'm just kidding. So she'll be here uh, with me uh, providing uh, worship. Thank you. Rebecca's like, I'm not going to show up now. Well, today we're going to continue in our message series titled Church. That's what the posters are up here. We want to thank Sal for the design of those. And that's right. Yeah, you can give them a hand. Yeah, the Lord has blessed them. And I believe today's message for many of you, at least that's been my prayer, that you're going to leave here today yet with another level of understanding of the church. We'll get another view of the church. Last week, some of you will remember from that sermon that we checked to see who is the founder of the church, what is the foundation of the church. See, that might not seem like a big deal on Sunday mornings. It might not be relevant or even important to you right now. But you see, it is because of the implications of not knowing or understanding who is the one that founded and is the foundation of the church. Last week, we covered two points to start that I want you to keep in mind as we progress this morning. The first point from last week is that Christ is the founder of the church and the foundation of the church. Now, that, again, might seem like a no-brainer, but you see, it is a big deal. And it is because there are some faith traditions that say that Peter is that foundation. That's wrong. Now, this probably kind of started from a very bad understanding of a comment that Jesus is making to Peter, which wasn't his name to begin with. His name is Simon. It starts in Matthew chapter 16. Jesus answering him says, Simon Peter is answering that question Jesus is posing to his disciples. He's asking his fellas, his homies, well, who do you think I am, right? Somebody says, I'm a chipster. Some, yeah, it'll come to you later. Don't worry about it. He's asking, well, who do you think I am? Simon, not Peter, is answering. He says, well, you're Jesus, the Christ. You're the Messiah. See, Jesus responds then in verse 17. I'll be paraphrasing. Right? This is where the wheels have fallen off for some of the faith traditions. Jesus answered him, you're right, Peter. And upon this rock, I will build my church. He changes his name right there and then. Now, if you weren't here last week where we reviewed this, right? You might also believe the implications in just reading it that way, that Peter is the foundation. Or at least the first and the very most important person in the church. But here's the point and the problem. It's that name Peter, right? It's a name. To us in this culture that we live in, right, we know guys named Peter, right? Remember Peter Brady from the Brady Bunch, right? It's just Peter. That's his name. It's just a name. That's what it has become in our culture. I remember back in high school, I knew a girl, she's still alive, so I know a girl, her name's Summer, and I thought, how cool is that? As a matter of fact, when I hear Summer, I don't think of her, I think of the time of year, Summer, 
right? It's still not an understood name the way it is in Peter. That's the point. You see, Jesus, when speaking to Simon, tells him, Simon, Petros, which means little stone, little stone. He's just a little stone upon this huge monolith, this huge rock, like the rock of Gibraltar on the insurance commercials, right? There's an insurance guy, so he'll know that. <laughs> upon this huge thing, I'm going to build my church. You see, in other words, little stone, paraphrasing, upon this huge truth that my father has given you that I am the Christ, that I'm the Messiah. Upon that truth, I'm going to build my church. This is a, tr a huge monolith. It's a huge rock. Why wouldn't it be? It's Jesus. He's the Christ. Death and hell will not defeat his church. Boom. So first point from last week is that Christ is the founder, not a man. Second, Christ is the builder of the church, the ecclesia. This gathering of people, ecclesia, is the word being used here. And Jesus uses three ways primarily to build this gathering, this church. Three ways, if you want to write these down. These are very important. He builds his church week in and week out through the Holy Spirit. We know this because Jesus is at the right hand. The Holy Spirit is here. He builds his church primarily through the Holy Spirit first. Second, through doctrine. Oh, big word. I'm a Chicano. I can say doctrine. Doctrine, all it means are truths and facts that are found in Scripture. Christ uses the Holy Spirit and the truths that are found in the Bible to build His church. And third, through theology. Orale, some big words. Theology, that, that, that just means who God is. Who is God? That is why it's very important to understand who founded the church. And what is the foundation of the church? Because its leader and founder is Christ, not a man. It's not an organization. Yes, we gather in the local church as we do this morning, right? And it's important for you to understand that. Because Peter was a man. You'll remember right after that. What does Jesus say? He says, hey man, Satan, get behind me to Peter. Does that sound like a good founder? No, the foundation is Christ. Why is that important? Because maybe, you see, listen to me very closely. Snap your fingers if you're still listening. Orale pues. All the new people are like, what? We snap what? <laughs> see, maybe you were hurt in a church. Maybe something that the church did, the pastor did, upset you. Then I have good news for you today. Find a local church that loves God, that uses the word of God, and connect there. Because we come together, not because it's what we do on Sunday mornings, but because of what it is. It is the creation of Christ himself. That Christ is building even here today among us. He is our leader. He is our savior. To all honor and glory be his. You see? That was last Sunday. Christ is the founder and the foundation. But the next question for us to tackle in this series this Sunday morning and it's today's title. It's the reason we go to the church. Have you ever wondered that? What's, why, why do we go on Sunday mornings? Right? Why, why do we do that Saturday nights? Why do we have to do that? I remember as a kid a long time ago. It's because I'm old. I remember I asked my mom. I, I even asked my grandmother almost simultaneously. We all lived together. And I don't think that they thought... I knew what I was asking, and I understood what I was asking. It was one of those questions I guess I wasn't supposed to ask. Now, I wasn't being a wiseacre as I am usually. Back then, I was an altar boy. I was participating in the service of God, for goodness sakes, every Sunday morning. I was just asking for the reason why do we go to church every week? Why, why do we do that? My mom said, Mijo, it's because God wants us to. Oh, Okay. My grandmother said, callate. You know, shh, shh, shh. Translation in that callate is this. Mijo, that's an anti-holy qu uh, question that you're asking. Be, be, be quiet. Don't ask that. You might offend God. But you know, the more that I've been pastoring, the more I work in ministry, I got to say something about that. There ain't too much that is off limits to ask God. Right? That's a good, good thing. That's good news for us. Amen? 
Now, like I said last Sunday, I've been wanting to do this series for quite some time, and today is one of the main reasons why. That is because of what has happened in church. See, some church leaders, even in our modern times, stay with me, some church leaders have disqualified the reason why to even go to church. You can go, you don't have to go, you can look at us on the internet, right? They've disqualified because of not knowing the reason why we're supposed to go to church. I remember there's a, a very important and famous church leader in our culture still today, very, very hip and cool, not as hip and cool as me. He announced one Sunday morning to his church that they were going to be selling all their buildings and property and that they would all soon join him for service at a park if they wanted to continue to be the church. Hmm. What? Still other leaders that I know, not so famous, they have decided that the organized local church is also incorrect, what we do here on Sunday mornings. This one leader is promoting that we should all meet in groups of no more than maybe two or three or even four and not pass that and not do all the churchy things that we're familiar with. Still others have said that the church is something that they did back then, kind of in the New Old Testament. We aren't to do all that church stuff anymore, that God will just kind of all bring us together somehow, whatever that means. And yet, hmm, some of us even here today, can we get a little personal? Can, can, can we just get a little bit real with each other this morning? Is that, would that be cool? Some of us couldn't formulate a reason why we go to church, why we're supposed to. Our attitude is, that's just what we do. And, and so if that's you, today it's a day of fortune for you. You might not care too much why we're supposed to go to church, but all of you are going to leave knowing why Christians go to church and why we're supposed to go to church and not just say, well, kind of God wants us to. Or don't ask those types of questions. We just go to church. Today we're going to get to the reason why we go to church. Now, the really good news about today's sermon, the reason we go to church, this is a topic that we have the most information on, oddly enough, in Scripture. The reasons why we go to church. I don't understand where all this weird doctrine starting from or coming from. Jesus spoke about the reason why we're to go to church. Peter did, John did, James, the brother of Jesus, and Paul. As a matter of fact, this topic, the reason we go to church, I could do just four sermons on today because of all the direction and truth we have on going and attending and being part of the church. We'll only do one, so don't worry about it. I just want to highlight this because we'll be going through a whole bunch of scripture today. So if you're into writing a whole bunch of notes and you look at the paper like, I need some more paper, go ahead and raise your hand. One of the ushers will get some, some more paper to you. There's a couple people. We're going to look at last week's verse again this Sunday. We're going to go to Matthew chapter 16 in verse 17 and 19. So go ahead and take your Bibles. I gave you all homework and I said, man, let's be hip and cool. Let's bring those old fashioned paper Bibles, right? Let's not just get the, this stuff. Because I know what you do with this stuff, by the way, right? right? Your Instagram, Facebook, text. We're going to go for menudo. Put these down. Put these down. Get, 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 let's be hip and cool. Let's be trendsetters. Get an old-fashioned Bible where you can do some stuff. Amen? Let's go to Matthew chapter 16. If you need a Bible, you can raise your hand. One of the ushers will get one to you. If you don't have a Bible, take that one with you as a gift from us to you. Last week's verses, again this Sunday, Jesus answering the question once again to Peter, which is like little stone. How many of you would like to be called little stone? I'm not talking stone drugs. I mean, like little stone. It's like, man, we, we, we've changed that name so much, right? Oh, your name's Peter. Que bonito. It's beautiful. Anyway, Jesus says this to Peter in verse 17. God has blessed you, Simon, son of Jonah. Hmm. 
Jesus said, for my Father in heaven has personally revealed this to you. So wonderful. This is not from any human source. You are Peter a stone. I love that translation. You are Peter a stone, and upon this rock of truth I will build my church, and all the powers of hell shall not prevail against it. And I'm going to give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever doors you lock on earth shall be locked in heaven, and whatever doors you open on earth shall be opened in heaven. Today I'm going to give you five reasons, five points, five reasons where to go to church. So the first reason we go to church every week, FYI, is to worship. <laughs> I was asking one of those guys that says that we're not supposed to organize for the church anymore, just kind of do this discipleship stuff. And I asked him on some of these points, this one is the main one. We get together to worship. Hmm. <laughs> I'm going to ask. Some of you guys after the sermon today, why do we get together? You better have that one on there. We worship him when we come together because Christ is building the church, not anybody else. That's why we worship him. We just saw that right now in Matthew. See, listen to me. I'm the pastor here. I'm like the spiritual leader here if you want, along with our other leadership team. But make no mistake. We're only managers. We're only caretakers. Christ is the head, the founder, and the foundation. And it is Christ that is building this gathering. And because it is Christ, we not only worship him, you see. It's because we, we think, I, I worship Christ. Christ makes worshiping him accessible. He gives us access to worship him. And we've taken it for granted. Look at Hebrews chapter 10, verse 19. Look at what the writer of Hebrews says. Oh, man. We have then, my friends, complete freedom to go into the most holy place by means of the death of Jesus. See, y'all read that and still don't even understand what that means. Accessibility. Uh, we're talking about worship. Stay with me. Y'all still with me? All right. You see, what has happened in the church, the reason we have forgotten the amazing gift we have to be able to go before a holy God and to worship our holy God, listen to me, in the most holy of places, the holy of holies, is because we have forgotten, some of us don't understand this access we now have through Jesus. You don't even understand it. It's kind of like my kids, they, they have no world without a microwave or cell phones. Right? Remember the old phones? Remember when you had to reheat food and you had to put it on the stove? It got all hard and crackly. That's what's happened to worship. Some of you have come into the presence of Christ through salvation. Great. And you don't understand the accessibility you have to go to the most holy of places. You've taken it for granted. Ooh. You see, listen to me. In the Old Testament, the priests were the only ones that could go and worship and serve in the Holy of Holies and live and live and live. Before, although you may really have a, a loving heart towards God, you would have to be what's known as ritually clean. It was a huge process that would take days, sometimes months. You couldn't just go in. This is the point that Jesus is telling his disciples during the Last Supper, which FYI wasn't even called the Last Supper, right? You see Jesus with his fingers like that in the paintings. You're like, que bonito, it's the Last Supper. It wasn't even that. It's the Passover. He's talking to them when he's washing their feet. Let me read this section to you because it means so much. You don't have to go there. I'll be in John chapter 13 if you want to write it down. I'll be starting in verse 6 through 10. And again, you don't have to go there, but you can read this later on. Guess who's there? It's our boy. Then he came to Simon Peter, see? And Peter said to him, Lord, are, are, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, what I am doing you do not understand now. The church hadn't been gathered yet. This is an action that the Lord is presenting to him so he can understand. When you all get together, this is what you do. But you'll know after this, he says, Peter said to him, you shall never wash my feet. Right? 
They're all stinky and cruddy and dirty and dusty. It's like, no, Lord, don't do that. And Jesus is speaking about spiritual things. Jesus answered him, if I do not wash you, nothing about feet. He's talking about his spiritual. If I don't wash you, you have no part with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, here we go again. Simon, right? Like some of us, clueless. Lord, not only my feet, but also my hands and my head. Chihuahua. Jesus said to him, he who is bathed needs only to wash his feet. He's completely clean. And you're clean. But not all of you. He's talking about Judas. That is, if I've saved you, if you believe in me, you're clean. You see? And this is, this is good. See, if you're saved, if you belong to Christ, he, and he is your Lord, then you don't have to keep kind of pounding your chest, hoping that God's going to accept you. No. But listen to me about washing your feet. It does mean to make yourself ready to worship him. See, did you all get ready to worship him this Sunday morning? See, you can go into his presence and live, and we've taken it for granted. And how do we make this, how did he make this holy place accessible? Oh, man, this is going to be so good. Y'all remember the crucifixion of Christ, right? The movies and all that? Matthew 27 is that scene. Our Lord, betrayed, beaten, stripped, whipped, bloody, dying on the cross. In Luke 23, 46, we're told that Christ let out a, a huge cry, and he says, into your hands I commit my spirit. At that moment, back in Matthew 27, 51, we're told that there's this veil, a thick curtain, you see, that separated the outer temple courts to the intersection called the Holy of Holies. That curtain was torn from the top to the bottom. It was torn for us to see and to enter. The curtain torn is to show us this point here, why we gather on Sunday mornings, is to worship our holy God and live. Maybe you ain't following, but listen. For you and me, on Sunday mornings, we call it worship, right? Que bonito. It's worship. And that is what we do. That's what we call it. You all with me? But to our Lord, He made this place where He is accessible so that we can have fellowship with Him. You come Sunday mornings thinking, I'm going to go worship the Lord. I hope Maya sings today because she's... And He says, I'm doing this so that I can have a relationship with you. Sunday mornings, right? Do I have to go to church? Do I have to go to the youth group next Saturday? Do I have to go to Wednesday worship once a month? Do I have to go all the way to downtown to MPC? All right? I like what Vicky told somebody. Jesus endured the beatings, the humiliations, the cross. Do you think the road to the cross was a short trip? He did all that for our fellowship with other believers and most importantly with himself. What have we done on Sunday mornings? We come together to worship him. Sorry. The reason we go to church is so that we can all be united as a body of believers in the local church to worship our God that paid the price to have fellowship with him today and for the rest of eternity. The second reason we go to church is for ministry. The reason why we come on Sunday mornings and participate in the local church is for ministry. Now that word ministry, for some of you, it sounds very churchy, right? A little scary. Sounds like something maybe that you don't want to do. But ministry is a great thing to be a part of because remember, Christ is building His church. He includes us as believers in the work of building this church. Ministry to all of us in the church as part of the church that God is building is defined as this. This is the definition of ministry that I like that we're going to use. It is our service to the church because of the gifts that God has given us. It is the service we give back to his church for the gifts he's given us. What a great definition. Notice it doesn't say anything about the pastor has the gifts or the preacher or the leaders. Ministry is our God-given gifts in service to God. 
Oh, no, pastor. That's for people like you. What are they? Check out 1 Peter 4.10. 1 Peter, guess who's speaking again? Simon, the rock, the stone. Check that out. Each one, as a good manager of God's different gifts, if you want to, if you feel like it, if the drive to MPC isn't too far, is for the good of others. Is that what it says? Don't look at me. You can look up there. Is that what it says? Must use for the good of others the special gift he has received from God. All of us have a special gift. All of us. Notice Peter says the gifts we have received. That is ministry, you, you making yourself available to serve him. I'm so grateful for all of you that do here. I think of the Parsons opening up their home so that the youth can go and enjoy their swimming pool. Of Bethany that helps and, and uses her artistic talents that we all enjoy. People like Robert and, and Mike on Sunday mornings making the coffee, greeting, at least trying to greet people. And cleaning up your spilled coffee and water. Think about that. It's like you guys that tithe. It's an act of worship, but tithing is also an act of ministry. Because when you tithe, when you add into this body of believers, it is also in service to each other. You know, in speaking about tithings, let me just break for a little bit. I was speaking to Robert. We we're kind of thinking about what do we do? What do we do? Do we, do we go into a, a church campaign, right? We're Baptists. We like campaigns for some reason. That was just a joke. But some churches, right, they'll pick up funds like for three or four or five years, right, to kind of build for something. I want you to write this date down, everybody. September 12th. September 12th. Very important date. That's where we're going to wrap up this series on the church. And instead of going for big, huge monthly, every month you're giving for the next three or five years, I want you to do this. Will you start to pray and consider what you're going to give on September 12th for the next step here at MPC? This is above and beyond your tithes and offerings, by the way. But what are you going to give? I don't know if you've noticed, our, our room next door is jam-packed with kids, and we praise God for that. Obviously, some of you are sweating. Hello. So instead of doing these huge campaigns, we're just going to collect twice a year towards whatever the Lord wants to do for the next step, either here or getting another building. September 12th. Say amen. amen. Okay, be in prayer for that. So the first reason we go to church is to worship. Second is to minister, and that's everybody, even the kids. Ask Seth. Poor Seth, I had him going back and forth this morning. The third reason we come together is to evangelize. Woohoo! Oh, pastor's taking me where I don't want to go. We go on Sunday mornings to evangelize, Pastor. See, that's just another churchy word that kind of freaks people out. All it means is someone that shares the good news. Shares the good news. I like what Pastor Ariel says there at Dell Soul about this. He says, I was a hungry, homeless person now sharing with other hungry, homeless people where I found food and a home. That's all we are. That's all we are. Look at Matthew chapter 5, verse 15. Jesus, what he talks about evangelizing. No one lights a lamp and puts it under a bowl. Some people wonder, do you think Jesus joked around? Instead, it is put on the lampstand where it gives light for everyone in the house. Circle lampstand. You all don't even know where that's going. You see, evangelizing. What's interesting about this visual that Jesus is giving us on the lampstand is that is a symbol of the church. In Revelation chapter 1, you can look for it yourself. You see, as a member of the church, we are to show and share the good news. Now put it under a bowl and hide it. It's good news. You ask some Christian, what you, I went to church, it was hot. Pastor went long. I did, the Luby's line was long. 
I went to go help at a ministry and I was sweating. It was outside. And has Jesus saved you? Yeah, but it's good news. I love how Peter tells us to share the good news. I always use this, 1 Peter 3.15. How are we supposed to share the good news? Have reverence for Christ in your heart. Are you sharing the good news with somebody in your life? Or are you just being a downer? Have Christ in your hearts and honor him as your Lord. Peter says, be ready at all times to answer anyone who asks you to explain the hope you have. I talked to some of you guys, and I hope you leave me. It's like, dude, get away. You have no hope. <laughs> Wait a minute, Pastor. Do you mean we're, we're supposed to evangelize at the church? At the church? Let me ask you a question. Do you think everyone that comes is a Christian? <laughs> Do you think that all the Christians that have it together have everything figured out? Is that what you think on Sunday mornings? You see, we call this level of evangelism in the church discipleship. Discipleship. You all don't have to raise your hand, but say hallelujah if I sit down with you at least once a week. Yeah, discipleship. Fourth reason we go to church is to baptize. Ah, oh, here comes the Baptist now. David, you took me to a Baptist church. <laughs> Pastor's saying you've got to baptize people. Okay, we'll see, what, we'll, we'll, we'll see your definition of baptism today. This, this, this point is so misunderstood, by the way, about baptism into the church. <laughs> this goes hand in hand with that last point, making disciples. As a matter of fact, this point here is the main reason we go to church, baptism. <laughs> Oh, man, it's so good. Someone's going to learn something. Is someone learning something already this morning? Yes. Okay. Look at Matthew 28, verse 19 through 20. <laughs> Jesus, then go then to all peoples everywhere and make them disciples. Except for the people that work 40 hours a week or more than 52. No. <laughs> Baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's where we dunk you, yes. And teach them to obey everything I have commanded you. Hmm. You, he says. That is you as part of the church. Incorporate all those people that are coming into the local church. Baptizing them into what the church is doing. Into the work of the church. The Apostle Paul, in speaking to the church in Corinth, is making this very same point. Baptizing them into, yes, salvation. Then water baptism, absolutely. But it doesn't stop there. It's not only that baptism. No. Why? Because the church is made up of people with different backgrounds and talents and abilities and gifts. Baptize them in to what the local church is doing. 1 Corinthians 12, 13. Look what he says. In the same way, all of us, whether Jews or Gentiles, that's religious or none, whether slaves or free, oh, I'm not a slave. Show me your credit card debt. Anyway. Have been baptized into the one body by the same spirit, and we all have been given the one spirit to drink. We all drank the Kool-Aid. You see, yeah, cool, being baptized through water. As a matter of fact, if you've had communion here, then you know this walking in obedience thing is a really big deal to us here. Water baptism is a really cool thing, and if you haven't done it, let that kind of sting you a little bit. But listen, so is baptism to add others to the work of the church. It's also the reason we come here every week. Are you adding yourself? I like what Pastor Walter once said. He says, are you, are you putting more steps in the ladder so people can climb? Or are you taking them off so it's harder for them to serve? In the verses that follow, in verses 14 through 31, you don't have to go there. The Apostle Paul is making this point. Baptism, it's inclusion. It's dunked them into the work of the church by service of the church. 
I just had this past Sunday lunch with five families. Three are new to MPC. Right there and then I said to them, we need you. We can use your help. One of them even helped us in worship this morning. As a matter of fact, if you are in our leadership team, you already know what I'm going to tell you. Get someone to serve and help, and they will strengthen the reason why they come to the local body of believers. See, listen to me, all you marketing majors. This isn't marketing. This is the plan of Christ for his church. This is the way the church grows. This is the reason why churches are supposed to be growing, FYI. Inclusion, baptism into the church. So the reason we go to church is worship corporately, our mighty God. Second, for ministry. That is, you help and serve the work of the church. Third, to evangelize, share the good news. Some of you can learn a thing or two about being joyous anyway. Hang out with Robert or Lori or Selena or Fernie. They'll, they'll show you joy. Or Amy. Fourth, baptize them. That is, you get connected and they get others connected. And the last reason we go to church is to teach. Oh, pastor, I don't know how to teach. Boy, oh boy. I've seen this at work at the church. As a matter of fact, my, my wife, Selena, she says, I need to learn more. I said, you want to learn? Go lead a group. Go lead a Bible study. See what the Lord teaches you. I see people like Vicki, my Esther. She teaches young girls that are in her care. I see ladies like Lori and Selena invest in other ladies. I've seen people like David Garcia and Manny Chavaria and Paul Sinceri teach other men. I've seen Fernie teach our young adults. People like David and Lori teaching our Neos group that's coming up with what they know. No biblical knowledge that they're going to share. It's what they know about the law. You see? Let me read some scripture for you to hear about this. 2 Corinthians 1.4, you don't have to go there. Paul says, he helps us in our troubles so that we are able to help others with all kinds of troubles using the same help that we ourselves have received from God. See, God has helped you and you're not teaching anybody. You're just getting, thank you, Lord, for blessing and healing me. Hallelujah. You got cancer, right? And God's doing something in you. Someone else with cancer, and you're like, I'm out. No. You see, in this, what God has rescued us from, God rescues us so that we can be in help and service and teach others. In Titus chapter 2, that's all it is. Paul teaching, he says, hey man, if you're godly, teach godliness. If you're an older man, learn how to be godly and teach the younger men how to be godly. He says, ladies, learn how to be godly and then te teach the younger ladies. The reason we come to church is to teach. There are so many ways to teach. I had a person come up to me and tell me, Pastor, I just want to tell you how much I admire and I appreciate Robert back there. He's so humble in the work that he does. It's because he mops and he cleans. And somebody threw something right on cue. <laughs> and they said to me, as he's doing that, he does it with a smile. And you can tell that he loves it. He's teaching people by mopping. Carmen, she comes and she tells me, you know what I, why I come clean? Because I want to teach my grandkids. It's in service to the church. Teach. She's cleaning toilets to teach other men teach men. Older women teach younger women. Young people teach us youthfulness. I'll pick out the ones that they need to learn. I'll, I'll come talk to me and say, who do you want me to teach youthfulness? I'll point them out to you. Leaders teach doctrine and theology, but also by your actions lead and teach on Sunday mornings and when we come together. See, why are you coming to church? Why do you come to church on Sunday mornings? Why do you come on Saturdays or Wednesdays? To end or start the week off right? I mean, yeah, that's good. But is that the reason why? See, are you here? Or do you go to church so that you can keep God happy by at least going to church at least one day a week? Have you made church out to be a thing that you do or you don't have to really do? 
Like I said, I'm so glad that you've joined us for worship this morning. Maybe you're not going to return. I don't know. We hope you do. But if you don't, if, you, if you're not going to come back, will you take time to be a part of a church for the reasons why we're supposed to go to church? If you don't come back, will you go back to that church or a church to worship, to share the good news with others in the church, coming to that church? So you can baptize, that is, you be a part of it and then include others into the baptism of the church in service and participation. And lastly, will you start going to church so you can be taught and so you can teach? Or is church just the thing? It's a punctuation on the end of the week. Church was made for us to be a part of, for you to be a part of. Church is our act of worship for our God. That is the only thing in his creation that he ever had to pay for in order for us to have fellowship and with other believers. I don't like church people. Well, get ready. That's all the people are going to be in heaven. <laughs> Listen to me. If you heard this message today, say hallelujah. Hallelujah. How are you going to do church from now on? How are you going to do it? Scripture has a word for this. It's called sanctify, right? Saintly, right? The faith tradition that I grew up in, whew, made a big deal out of that. So-and-so became a saint. I became a saint when I started following Jesus. Sanctified means that you're being set apart for Him. That's the work of the church. We come to celebrate every week and with others to say, I have been set apart. I don't have it figured out, but I know who does. His name is Jesus and the Holy Spirit empowers me. I'm being sanctified. Can I help you get into sanctification? Or are you just trying to hustle so you can beat the lunch? Hmm. In Ephesians 5, 25 through 26, you don't have to go there. Paul is giving the description of the church. Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her, that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of the water by his word. What have you made church to be? A thing? Or is it really the word of God? Hmm. Let's pray. Some of us before this had no reason why we come together. Some of us kind of knew. Some of us are finding out got way more responsibility than we signed up for. Because we made church to be a thing. Hmm. Hmm. We've made worship a thing that we do or don't do because the band was loud, but they weren't loud today because they went acoustic. Forgetting that our God had to pay a price to have fellowship and we worship Him. Some of us don't want to serve even with tithes and offerings, because, well, they've got enough and the church doesn't need me, but it's what we're supposed to do. It's in service to your God. Some of you don't come with joy, so you, have, you don't want to share the good news of what Christ has done for your life. He saved you from hell. And some of us, let's be honest, we don't like all the people that participate in the church, and so we've made baptism a difficult thing for others to be a part of. And some of us, let's be honest, we don't want the responsibility of teaching no one nothing. <laughs> but will you let the Lord help you teach others by your actions and by the love you have for Him? See, if that's you, if today's sermon has kind of awakened something in you and you say, Lord, I have made the church out to be a thing and Lord, it is what you have created for me. 
and you're just realizing that this Sunday morning. If that's you and you want to repent, which is a good thing, raise your hand. Amen. 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 See, I didn't ask anybody to close their eyes because there's a lot of hands going up. If you've made church out to be something that is the wrong definition, you still have a chance. If you want to repent, go ahead. Raise your hand. Amen. 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 And Lord, I pray for those people like me that have made church to be a punctuation on our week, a good luck charm that we do so that we can have better luck from you, Lord. Some of us, we just had no understanding of what the local church is. And so, Father, I thank you for those people that raise their hands and are repenting because we've made a thing out of something that you are creating for us to be with you. Lord, we thank you for forgiving us. But Holy Spirit, will you guide us? Will you challenge us this week to be the church in action? Whether here at MPC or back at our home churches, wherever that may be. But will you put a fire in us to be the church that you had to die for, Lord? And Lord, for us, give us a new focus and a new fire for the church that we can include people and fellowship with people and teach and to be taught and to be in your service, Father God. Help us to be the church that spreads the good news that you are alive and that you love us. We give you all honor and praise because it's yours. It's yours. Every knee shall bow and every tongue is going to confess. We're just doing before it happens. And so we give you all honor and glory. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray and all God's people said, amen and amen. Now next Sunday, we're going to be teaching on who are the leaders of the church <laughs> and what are their responsibilities. So Robert and I will not be here next Sunday. No, I'm just kidding. But invite somebody. Invite somebody. We want you to know that we love you and we wish you the very best this week. But do church and do it for Christ. Amen.